Anchors up, sales are full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you today on this lovely Know Your Enemy episode? This is this is the enemiest of a, of the Know Your Enemies. This is this is this is this is the Know Your Enemy that we prepare for all year. Th- this is the enemy. This is the final boss. I know that there are still games left to be played. Jared, it's not. The, yes, it is. This is the final boss. This is this is what it all this is. This is what matters. Everything else is ending credits. Everything else is wrapping up storylines. This is the climactic end. The college football playoff is just DLC. Damn it, Austin, stop <laughs> being funnier than me. I, I, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> well, that's, the college football playoff just, is just New Game Plus. Nah, DLC is still better. Yeah. God right, let's, damn it, let's, let's, just, let's, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Know your enemy, the cheaters up north. We the people the people in the Discord have been calling them uh, T. Is it is it a is it a, a, the T Cun? Uh, the the cheaters up north. Um, I don't know why we don't call them the cheater up north team personally. Um, don't think about that joke too hard, or I'll be or I'll get demonetized. Um. <laughs> This is it, Kyle. Yeah, so, this is it. This is this, yes. this is this is the Wolverine episode. Yeah, so we could be going through here with running through a lot of numbers, a lot of oh, watch for this player, watch for that player. But really, what we really need to focus on here, Jared, is is the stats from Michigan State and before versus after Michigan State, looking at those stats, looking at those numbers, seeing the difference in this offense, because because the, the defense is, is still really good. The defense is really good. Even after um, after everything went down during the Michigan State week, I, I think but that offens- but, off- but offensively uh, things things changed quite a bit things changed quite a bit since since uh the michigan state week well kyle let me i i I don't know about that because like we can talk about how the offense has gotten worse and it and it has because but but we can also talk about how penn state actually has a very good defense with all their shortcomings on offense and penn state has plenty with all their shortcomings on on offense, Penn State is still a very talented, very well coached defensive football team. Maryland, their offense is good, but it's not great. Uh, they're not incredibly consistent. They're explosive. Baby Tua can make big plays but he can also make big plays such as a pick <laughs> six, such as a, 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 you know, getting stripped on a sack. Um, you live, you live by baby Tua, you die by baby Tua. So, you know, we can talk about, Oh, their defense looks much worse or their defense still looks pretty good, but their offense looks much worse, which is still true. Because the Maryland defense is not very good, and the Michigan offense struggled against them mightily. But so, we've but they've not really played a an offense with anywhere near the talent that Ohio State has. And I say talent instead of just as good as the Ohio state offense is because Ohio state's offense has consistency issues. I I don't have to tell Ohio state fans watching that. 
Yeah. Um, so, so looking at the, looking at this here, Jared, uh, I start with the the quarterback and running back here, McCarthy here. Ever since ever since after Michigan State, he has McCarthy has not thrown a touchdown, and has thrown one pick in three games. Zero touchdowns, one interception in three games, averaging about if I'm reading this correctly, he's averaging less than 60% completion percentage. And it is not, yeah, hostile. not, no, not good. Especially. Yeah. He, he went to town against Purdue. Uh, cause he kind of had to, cause the, cause Purdue's Purdue was stopping the run. The Penn state number looks, um, looks bad, but that's because they didn't even pass the second half. Oh, hold on though, the, Kyle. Why didn't they okay. pass in the second half? Because they couldn't. Uh, you, you see my point? Like, mm -hmm. why didn't they run? Or why Why did they choose not to let? I don't know how many times, because we were watching it. Uh, you know, we weren't, this wasn't a Discord game, but uh, this wasn't one of the, the group watch games in the in the discord, but we were like chatting as the game was going, um, just, you know, texting, chatting. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know how many times I said during the course of that game, man, Michigan's offense was looking really good until they tried to let JJ McCarthy actually do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they get, and they gave the ball, ball off to a uh, decorum and he had his, um, best game of the season by far like it's not even close he would you be surprised if i told you jared quorum has only had two 100 plus yard games all season i'm i'm more interested in like in the team rushing yards if i'm being honest because edwards does get a lot of carries um and yeah, so so as a so as a yeah as a team, yes, they do they do get over a hundred yards a game, um, well over that. But, but yeah, as, so so going to court, so team, going to so as a team, um, they get about four and a half yards per rush, which puts them forty seventh in the country, which I was surprised by. Like, I can go through all the stats. Like, I, and I feel like during Know Your Enemy the past, you know, ever since October, I go through all the stats and I can go through all these stats, um, opponents points per game. Michigan is number one in the country, only allowing nine points per game yards per game. Number one in the country. But how much of that actually matters? How much of that actually matters? Or how much of that should I say, can we actually trust? Yeah. Well, I was every to game that with, um, before Purdue has an asterisk next to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, here, here's the thing I wanted to pull up. So, looking at Blake Corum here, his his averages per game here looked pretty good. Um, in in their preseason games, over seven yards, five yards, eight yards, seven yards that he had per game here. But then after Michigan State. 2.9 yards per game. He had five and a half against uh, Penn State because he, he he went off and had to. But then against Maryland, he had 3.4. Definitely a very significant, a lot less yards per game or yards per rush compared to uh, pre-Purdue week here. And yes, yes, he gets a lot of touchdowns, but when you look at his touchdowns, they're only in like in the, like just a few yards out and then they give the ball off, which rightfully they should with that offensive line. And then he gets those easy touchdowns. And so I think his his rushing touchdowns, which he's had 20 for the year, and you look at that, it's like, wow, he has 20 rushing touchdowns. That's great. But that's because he gets – that's all they do in the red zone is just hand the ball off to him, and then he goes behind those uh, big offensive linemen there. I see. So, so, what I'm so what I'm trying to get at here is that – the re the rushing hasn't been all that hasn't been as what it used to be no pre Purdue uh, and honestly like even and as I was going down through these stats which I'm not I'm not going to read through all of them like I normally would because again 
everything before Purdue gets an asterisk. But even with that asterisk, they're 47th in the country yards per rush. I was surprised by that. With so many top 10, because they have a lot of top 10 statistics. I was expecting a incredibly high yards per rush, something in the top 10. And it's not. It's 47th in the country. Mm hmm. And considering that they're one of the top teams in the country as far as rush versus rush versus pass share at roughly 60 40. I was expecting better, if I'm being honest. I was expecting I was expecting over five yards per carry. But by the way, uh, people are starting to share some game or some final score predictions in the chat. Austin says 38 to 23. Uh, Esquire said 31 to 20. Those are good scores if you're Ohio State. Those are good scores if you're Ohio State. The more points scored, the better for Ohio State, in my opinion. In my mind, I can't get past like 24 to 17. I, I I think that this game hits the under. What is the what what is the over under on this? Forty six and a half. Forty six and a half. So, what? That's about twenty three points per team. I, I'm taking the under on that. Yeah. What is that? Twenty. Yeah, that's like twenty one to twenty four. Something like that. So the further you go over, the better news it is for Ohio State. In my opinion, if this is a game in which Michigan is allowed to put together 17 play drives, taking nine minutes off the clock. It's bad news for Ohio State. The more plays run in this game, the better for Ohio State. The more points scored in this game, the better for Ohio State. But if this turns into, like I said, a game in which Michigan is allowed to three yards in a cloud of dust us to death. That's my biggest fear. Because I'm telling mm -hmm. you right now. J.J. McCarthy's never had to read a defense in his life. I'll say it. I'm tired of talking around Connor Stallions. J.J. McCarthy has never had to read a defense in his life, and it's starting to show. And I think you mentioned it earlier in the season, Jared. Uh, week three, they struggled heavily in the first half against Bowling Green. Hmm. McCarthy. You think they McCarthy scouted threw... Bowling Green? And you oh, know I what getting, I mean. I get... And you know what I mean when I say scouted. McCarthy threw three interceptions in that game, and then they find like, oh, Oh, hold on. Let me let me let me look up something real quick here. You know, they 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 taped this. I mean, allegedly, presumably, I don't know anything. They were filming, studying the first the first half calls. They went to halftime, they figured them out. Came back in the second half and did what needed to be done. Maybe they think they didn't have to or maybe someone tipped off Bowling Green to do something with their signals and maybe those signals weren't working in the first half. I don't know. Yeah. So going back to talking about how, how, but the rushing attack hasn't been up to par. Uh, looking at like last year's here, even like Donovan Edwards, we talked about last year, like Michigan starting the wrong running back. Right. Well, Donovan's not actually blowing people out this year either. He's averaging 3.4 yards per carry. He's been playing compared... better lately. He had a very rough start to the year. Um, but then is, when I say lately, he? well, is he hold on? <laughs> then then Connor Stallions happens, but he was starting to come on. Um. I want to I want to I want to agree with that. Looking at looking at against um, against Purdue, two point six yards per carry. That's post uh, against Maryland 
against against Maryland, 3.5. Okay, before that, Michigan State, 2.3. Indiana, 2.2. Nebraska, 3.4. Rutgers, 2.2. He's not rushing that well this year for Kerry. Uh, I thought he started to look not, not better. Compa- not, compa- not compared to last year. Last year, he was... Last year he was averaging seven and a half yards per pop. Yeah. And he and he's well well under fifty percent of that. Um yeah. I think when it comes to Connor Stallions and the sign stealing and all of that, I think a lot of people have focused on the Michigan defense knowing what the opponent's offense is doing. I think that's been a large part of people's focus, a large part of the narrative. And I don't think enough attention has been paid the other way around. Agreed. Completely agree. You know, we talk about that offensive line. And how that offensive line, despite being just as talented as last year's offensive line, hasn't looked quite as good this year. And we talk a lot about show that. And we talk a lot about, you know, J.J. McCarthy and how even though he doesn't necessarily look spectacular, his completion percentage, uh, at least before the past two games, was something like 76 percent. I think it's still pretty high because he didn't throw it that many times against either Penn State or Maryland to affect the overall average. Um, right now, the completion percentage for the team, at least, sits at 73 uh, and a half percent, which puts them second in the country. It was Joe Burrow high before the scandal broke. Yeah, but not even then, because he even even then it was very dink and dunk. And it's almost like he knew where to put the ball most of the time or something. It's almost like he knew what was coming. Crazy talk, Jared. I know. And here's the thing. Eat your nothing burger and enjoy it. Here's the thing. It is the thing that really. When I'm watching the when I'm watching the Maryland, Michigan game. Watching this Maryland, Michigan game. And what I saw was Maryland not allowing J.J. McCarthy to run out of the pocket a lot. Because quite frankly, J.J. McCarthy is a lot better on the run than he is standing in the pocket. Yes, yeah. And we we saw that last year. We saw that last year. So the question becomes, hey, hey, a lot of outside pressure. But here's the thing. If you know where that pressure was coming from previously, if you knew where the blitz calls were coming from previously, and now you suddenly don't know where those are, those blitz calls are coming from, as we saw in the Maryland game, as we saw in the Penn State game, it makes that rollout game a lot tougher. Makes it a lot tougher to roll away from the blitz if you don't know where the blitz is coming before the play. The offensive line suddenly doesn't look so good when you can't roll away from the blitz every time. If you don't know where the blitz is coming, if you don't know what defensive scheme the secondary's in, all of a sudden, playing quarterback gets real tough, huh? J.J. McCarthy. I don't think this is a very good Michigan offense. And I think that, again, so much of the narrative around the the Connor Stallions, Michigan sign stealing scandal has been about Michigan's defense, because for whatever reason, I think casual audiences, casual football fans. Whenever they think about play calling. They think about offense. I think most casual football fans see play calling as an offensive thing. And they don't 
understand the complexities or they don't understand the nuances of defensive play calls. Like a lot of, a lot of people might know like, well, they, they, they think of defensive play calls as schemes, not play calls. You know, there's the cover two scheme or the cover three scheme or a man on man scheme. They think they, they will think about schemes in terms of defensive play calling, but they don't necessarily think about individual defensive play calls. Which, those are two separate things. One's a category of plays versus like the actual play calls. Yeah, but here's the revelation. Teams run all of those at different times. Yeah. You know, but, it, you know, it's sort of like saying, you know, sometimes you run a, a three wide, sometimes you run a five wide, sometimes you run a shotgun, sometimes you run, you know what I mean? You know, sometimes you run the ball, sometimes you pass the ball, sometimes you run a short pass, sometimes you run a long pass. Well, you know that, Jared. It's called a podcast cheese. No, 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 I agree with you. I'm I'm doing the it's called a podcast G's thing of explaining it, Austin. <laughs> Uh, we, we talked a lot watching, about watching uh, we talked a lot watching the mission watching the Penn State game and watching especially the Maryland game has totally shifted my confidence in regards to this game. Now that's not me saying that I feel super confident that Ohio State's going to win because I'm not super confident that Ohio State's going to win. I think this is still a close football game. Let me be very clear. I think Ohio State also has some glaring deficiencies and I think that Penn State Excuse me. I think that Michigan is well equipped and well positioned to take advantage of those deficiencies. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, talked a lot, pretty much talked all about the offense here. Defensively, um, so, so very, very talented defense here uh, in, in all levels uh, linebackers, defensive line. Uh, Tackles corners and, and safety. Yep. Corners and safeties are, are pretty solid. I don't think as much as last year, but they're still pretty solid. I agree. Year. Their strength is in their front seven. And that's not me disrespecting their secondary. That's me respecting their front seven. Just, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Like I think their front seven cheating or no sign stealing or no, their front seven is still insanely talented. And Very. their secondary is, is also talented. I don't think they're insanely talented the way that the front seven's insanely talented, but they're by no means deficient and by no means bad. They're still very good. Um, I, I The Michigan defensive line is incredibly good. Uh, the linebackers are very good and the secondary is pretty good, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Colson and Barrett, two linebackers uh, that's leading the team in, in tackles. Uh, they, they got a great pickup in Mason Graham, who's been very stellar in the inside for Michigan here. Uh, as a defensive tackle, you got three sacks for the year. That's, that's pretty good. But also their defensive ends getting a lot of pressure as well. Harrell has six and a half sacks and Stewart has four and a half sacks as well going to get a lot of pressure on on McCord here and the big question that we've talked about all year Jared was this offensive line can can it improve and can it slow down some of these pass rushers and this is this is their biggest test of the year here is can they can they slow down Harold and Stewart and Page and Colson and all of them to um, slow them down Hey, Kyle, I just did some quick math. If you want to mm -hmm. talk about, if you want to talk about after Purdue and before Purdue, before Stallions, after Stallions, Michigan has given up 48 points. Given up 48 points since the Connor Stallions news broke. Mm -hmm. That's over three games. In the eight games prior, they gave up 47 points. Interesting. 
And I, I did very quick math on that. So, so someone feel free to fact check me on that. But I think that I think that's right. My AD, my AD, my ADHD ass can't do mental math, but pretty sure that's right. Fifty two. Oh. 52, 52 points in three games. In the last three games? In the last three games. 24, 15, 13 oh. is 52. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what I did wrong. So 52 to 47. It makes it even worse. That makes it even worse. 17.3 17 point, 17. points per game. Which is still really good, which is still pretty good. Still pretty as a, good. As a defense. But but a far cry away from their overall nine point something average that they that they currently have. Oh, it's oh, it was it was well below that, I thought. Well, no, that's what it is right now. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm not I'm not saying the first I'm not saying the pre Purdue games. Um <laughs> It's good until you consider they played Penn State. That's that's a that's a valid point. And also, like Purdue isn't a great team either. Five point eight seven five, Kyle. Oof. In their eight games, their first eight games. Oof. Before Connor so, Stallions. Like, tripling, tripling. So tripling. Basically, roughly. They're giving up three times as many points per game. After Connor Stallions versus pre Connor Stallions. And again, consider that those opponents are Purdue, Penn State, and Maryland. Maryland has a pretty decent, but inconsistent, but decent offense. But Purdue and Penn State have terrible offenses. Yep. 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 And for what it's worth, they didn't really play any good offenses before that in the in the in the first eight games either. No, they didn't. Kyle. Maryland, the best offense they've played this year by far. By far. I want to say by far, but yes. No, I by did. far. Yes, they Who, are. Who's second? It would be Penn State. Buddy. I'm not, I'm not saying Penn State has a good offense. I, but you're, you're, you're not but, giving but Maryland, me by Maryland's far. Not, but Maryland, Maryland's not that good either. It's, it's Maryland... Penn State, a big divide, and then plug in whoever you want, Rutgers or whoever at third. Uh, Rutgers is not the third best offense they've played, Austin. I highly disagree with that. Rutgers, very good defensive team, but no. not give, uh, I would venture to say, it, it, <laughs> I would m probably say Minnesota is the third best offense. Before I and uh, Nebraska now, but they played Nebraska in September. And they, Nebraska was still trying to figure shit out in September, so not Nebraska. Uh, maybe if they played Nebraska, you know, in November, but not not now, not in September mm -hmm. when they did play. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I want. I kind of want to go through all the stats, but I. Also, the stats don't mean a hell of a lot, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, so, well, I, th I think th I think this is a good segue to to tell our um, listeners here of like what who who should we watch out for? Who like what is the difference in this game here? So, we're, so we're moving into predictions. The, so, is that since what we're the doing? since the stats since the stats don't really tell the whole story here. I think we I think we should talk about who who we should be looking out for in 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 this game here. So yes, Jared, let's let's get into our predictions. Okay. Uh Ohio State players to watch. I'm cheating. I haven't done this all year. This is my this is my opportunity Cheater. to cheat. I, Cheater. I'm, I'm doing two players. I'm doing my call and Tyler Williams. Cheater. Uh if Ohio State wants to win this game. Plain and simple, if Ohio State wants to win this game, they cannot allow themselves to get three yard and a cloud of dusted to death. Period. Make J.J. McCarthy beat you. 
because he's not gonna. This secondary that Ohio State has is tremendous. J.J. McCarthy actually has to learn how to read a defense between last Saturday and this Saturday. And I don't think it's going to happen. But if you look at what Michigan did to Penn State in the second half of that football game, in which they never threw a pass that counted. Michigan only threw one pass, which statistically never happened because they got waved off by a penalty. Michigan didn't throw the ball once in the second half against Penn State. That, to me, is the Michigan offense that they're going to attempt to use against Ohio State. Because if Maryland's defensive ends and linebackers were able to blitz on the outside and contain the rollout of J.J. McCarthy, well, then you better damn believe that Ohio State's defensive ends and linebackers are going to be able to do it, too. Michigan has had some injury issues. I don't know what the status is, quite frankly, of their offensive tackles. They have some injury issues. I don't know, quite frankly, what the status is of, of Roman Wilson. I suspect he'll play. His injury didn't look that serious during the Maryland game, but I don't know. Colston Loveland will be the guy you have to stop. Luckily, Ohio State's tendency over the past three or four previous seasons of getting eaten alive by big white tight ends has seemed to have not been the issue so far this year. Mm-hmm. So, but Colston Loveland's still going to get his share. We'll see what's up with Roman Wilson. But, you know, you got to look out for Colston Loveland for sure. Uh, But if Ohio State wants to win this game, they need to be stout up the middle. And that starts with my call in Tyleek Williams, my my Ohio State players to watch. Yeah, I'm going I'm going to go on the opposite side here, because as as you said here, Jared, um, earlier in the episode, Ohio State can score points. That's good. Well, obviously that's good. That's duh. But uh, <laughs> the more point, the more more points they can score. Um, they're they're playing they're playing at their game that they want to. Michigan wants to keep this a low scoring game here, and if they can keep it low scoring, it's going to favor Michigan. So, so it's going to come down to the offensive line and how how well they can stop this defense this Michigan defensive line from um making plays here. So. I'm going with the weakest link here. I'm going with Josh Simmons is is the player to watch. I don't for Ohio State here. I don't think he's the weakest link on the offensive line for what it's worth. Okay, well, I your 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 left your left, ta- your left tackle here. I last couple of times I, know, I, I know saw he's an been, I know he's been tackle. I know he's been getting a lot of help with with the tight ends here, but to help with, especially a lot with the those long deep pass. Um, has plays getting some help with the tight ends, but if if he has a good game here, it's I think that's going to open up a lot of a lot of holes for for Trey. It's going to give more protection for McCord to get the ball to Mecca and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Stover and all of them. So I I think keep a close eye out for for Josh Simmons. Last couple of times I saw an offensive tackle for Ohio State get ramshackled. It was Josh Myers. Just. I think Simmons has gotten a lot better through the course of the season, but I. That is wrong. No, it is absolutely not. Or excuse me, Fryer. Josh Fryer. <laughs> I don't know where Myers came from. Josh Fryer. Wait, enemy player to watch going to go with my theme here it's going to be uh the defensive line for michigan i'm going to go with jalen harrell uh 
very, very disruptive uh, pass um, edge rusher there. Seven and a half tackles for loss. Six and a half of those are are sacks. Two forced fumbles for the year. Big, big um, uh, difference maker there. So player to watch for me is uh, it's Jalen Harry. Going Zach Zinter, offensive guard for the Michigan offensive line. Um, again, you, you, you cannot let yourself get shoved off of the line. And Zach Zinter is Mr. Shove you off of the line. Ohio State's going to need to blitz intelligently. The defensive tackles are going to need to stand their ground. This Michigan interior offensive line is exceptional. And it's led largely by a very large man in Zach Zinter. Um, yeah, which which leads me right into the key matchup of the game, which is the Ohio State um, interior defensive line versus the Michigan interior offensive line. We saw, I, I mean, I said it. In the Know Your Enemy, Maryland, you know, I need to see the interior defensive line or just the defensive line in general not get pushed because we have definitely seen that through October and November through our own Purdue game and through the Wisconsin game and other games, just teams getting strong pushes right down the middle and you you simply can't, you'll lose. If Ohio State gets pushed around in the middle, they will lose. If Michigan is able to rush the ball five yards a pop, they will lose. Penn State was running right down the middle at Ohio State. And had they kept doing it, had they kept feeding their running back, had they kept feeding Allen, that game plays out differently. But they stopped. Michigan won't stop. Michigan proved that against Penn State. If Michigan is getting that is getting it done right down the middle. They won't stop. They will keep doing it. They will kill you four, five, six yards at a time. They will run Blake Corum 30 times if they need to. They will do that. They won't stop. They'll keep going. Ohio State has to stop it. Michigan won't stop it for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I had something down and I kind of changed my key matchup here, Jared, because I think it's very important, very important here. And that's red zone efficiency. Ohio State, Ohio State was one of the best in 22, one of the best in this red zone call, conversions here. Hmm? I was saying this is a good call. Was one of the best in red zone um, conversions here. Sixth last year in red zone touchdown percentages. Uh, this year, offensively, Ohio State is 61st in red zone conversions. 85% of the time they score points. They have 47 trips in the red zone. Of those 47, they only have 29 touchdowns and 11 field goals. That is not great. Not, no. not great in terms of... And, and, we, and we've seen it a number of times, too, against um, lesser opponents and Ohio State struggled in the red zone. Well, we saw it just Michigan has Michigan has the number two red zone defense in the country here. And we, we said it many times, and I think Jared says it more often than I do. You don't win games by kicking field goals. You, you got to find a way to you got to find a way to get into that red zone or get into the end zone when you're down when you're down in your opponent's uh within 30 yard uh within 30 yards there you gotta gotta find a way to get that ball into the end zone there you got you got playmakers with marvin harrison jr you got you got trey you got x emeka is healthy again you got stover so much talent out there get the ball into your playmakers hands there and let them at it sorry kyle but red zone efficiency people will hear you say Ohio State was one of the best red zone efficient offenses in the country last year, and now they're not. And I guarantee you, most of the people listening said, well, that's what happens 
when you go from CJ Stroud to Kyle McCord. And I'm telling everyone, if that's your attitude, you aren't watching the same football I'm watching. Because the issue has been the offensive line. Ohio State had two of the best offensive tackles in the entire country last year. Two of Th- Thanos just destroyed TJ Watt in the NFL last weekend as a as a rookie. Both of them are starting for NFL teams, by the way. Yeah, as as rookies and start and playing incredibly well. If you want to ask yourself, why did Ohio State go all the way to the cellar from the penthouse to the cellar on their red zone efficiency? Most people are going to say Kyle McCord. It's not. It's it's losing Paris Johnson. It's losing Thanos. That's that is why. But one la- one last stat here, Jared. Michigan's uh, red zone defense. They've only they've only uh, had opponents get to the red zone eighteen times all year, and of those eighteen, only six touchdowns. Do you, do you know how many of those have been in the past three games? Ooh. Uh, listen, I'm, don't don't look it up, Kyle. Look it up. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be tough to figure out. But what I can tell you is that before the Penn State game, Michigan never, not once, played a defensive snap snap inside their own ten yard line. Never, not once, played a snap inside their own ten yard line. Defensively. Uh, Holy shit, that dude. that number has been blown to hell the past two weeks. I don't even know what the number is anymore. It's not a relevant stat anymore. Penn State did it a few times, uh, just a handful of times. And then Maryland just blew the stat out of the water. I have no idea what the number is now. All right, Kyle. Kyle looks like he found something he likes. Did you find the question I asked? Purdue. All right. Purdue. They had a touchdown 24 yards out, not red zone. Cool. Penn State, 11 yard, one. 11 yard run, one. Eight yard pass, two. Uh, Maryland here, one yard touchdown, that's three. One yard run, that's four. One yard run, that's five. Five of their six red zone touchdowns in the past Two games. Huh. It's amazing how badly this team has fallen off in just the past two games. Wild how that happens. It's almost like. It's almost like there's some cheating ass motherfuckers. All right, Kyle, we we're supposed to be doing our predictions right now. I think we lost track. Well, of that. It, it kind of it kind of was. Oh, no, yeah, it kind no, yeah, of yeah, was. Yeah, no, no, because of the red zone efficiency. No, no, we 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 were still on track there. We're still on track. All right, Kyle, this is it. It's time to make our predictions. The spread pick, Kyle. This is the first time we've done this this year. Ohio State is dogged by three and a half points. I have a long-standing policy that applies to both Ohio State and Alabama. That if you give me the opportunity to pick them at minus six and a half or better, I will take it 100% of the time. You give me an opportunity to pick Ohio State, not just under six and a half points, but as a dog? Every time. I will take that every time. 100% of the time. I don't care. 100% of the time. You would be nuts not to pick Ohio State as an underdog in this game. They're giving you're you're giving that team up north three and a half point buffer. Uh, technically, no. Ohio State no. has the buffer. Well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I, I got I got the final score here. The team in Scarlet and Gray, 24, 
the team in cheating in blue 20. All right. No, no, no joking. No meme this time. Sorry, everybody. Um, it's wrinkled because I'm cleaning uh, out some things, but it's timely. Uh, it's also appreciated. Uh, this T-shirt, by the way, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, this T-shirt available for purchase. Uh, Merch dot the sleepcast dot com. My final score prediction, Ohio State 31, Michigan 17. And honestly, I feel like that's a lot of points. I feel like that's a lot of points. Um, I would not be shocked if it was like 21 to 10. I feel like 21 to 10 is absolutely on the table. You got two of the best defenses here and Ohio state at times has struggled offensively. And recently Michigan hasn't shown to be that great of an offense either. Yeah. They definitely could be a really low scoring game. Yeah. I mean, I've never Ohio. We've had gambling in Ohio for almost a year now. I've not placed one bet yet. And there's a sloop cast rule to say, don't real life gamble. But man, do I feel really good about Ohio State <laughs> dogged and taking the under in this game. Absolutely. Hey, who's our guest picker this week, Jerry? Our guest picker uh, is Zach. His name is currently Trey Henderson down in the chat. Uh, what does what does he have to say, Kyle? He has here. Big daddy of them all, the game, the Ohio State Buckeyes heading up to the North Northern Toilet Bowl. Teton's defense will be feisty, but I don't think they have the back seven to cover the studs of Stover, Emeka, and the goat, Marv. The OL has been on point these last couple of weeks, and Trey is a dog. And that's actually a good point. The offensive line may be getting some good uh, confidence boost with the way that they've playing too. That, that's a good point. Uh, defense is one of the best in the country, if not the best. McCarthy has thrown a touchdown in the last three weeks. Hmm. And injuries are starting, are starting to show, especially ego from getting caught cheating. Give me the Buckeyes in the shithouse, 24, scum 14. And oh, by the way, fuck Desmond Howard. Absolutely. Third, Tim, third Tim Bianca Patuka in there too. Kyle, mm -hmm. how much of a factor I mean, dude, would you say, I mean, dude? Dude, like, what was that? How much of a factor would you say it is the fact that Harbaugh is not on the sidelines? Like he gets very the, little. You don't think very it's, little? Very little? You think so? Very low. Well, well oh, oh, let me let me let me re let me rephrase that. Little in terms of the team as a whole. I think McCarthy is absolutely missing um, Harbaugh on the sideline. I think that's a good take. I think that's a good take, Kyle. And by the way, I'm, I don't know if we've mentioned it before or not, but yeah, I, I completely agree, Zach. Like, fuck Desmond Howard, the way that he's been acting these two, these last few weeks, just so childish and just laughing at everybody who talks about the, the scandal going on at Michigan and he, he needs like, Oh, <laughs> just laughing all over them. Like everyone like, dude, grow, grow the fuck up. Everyone gets so mad at Herb street because Herb street doesn't like Homer for Ohio state enough, according to Ohio state fans. But like, do, do you want her? But this, this is the alternative. Do you want Herb street being a clown and just being a joke the way Desmond Howard is? Is that what you want? Is that what you want, Ohio State fans? Do you, do you want Herb Street to lose all credibility and be a clown like Desmond Howard? I want the happy medium, but I prefer Herb Street's approach. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hermie because he's not a homer. Yeah, I, I don't know how Desmond is still on college game day. Uh, be, because someone ran something that says that he attracts a certain amount of audience. I don't know. From a, cert, from a certain uh, university. Maybe. 
All right, um, let's get into. Uh, we are running really long. Let us, uh, Kyle. It's a high state mission. As expe- I, don't, I don't care. As expected. All right, we have Austin's over unders here. It is the cheaters up north week. Let's get right into it. First one here. He has McCord passing yards for the game. Two hundred seventy-six and a half yards. Under. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm taking the under. I'm taking the under. If if Ohio State Correct. if Ohio State ends up scoring a bunch of points in this game, and by a bunch I mean thirty one, just to be clear, I don't mean a bunch by college football standards. I mean a bunch by NFL standards. It'll be because Trey broke some long ones, or you know, it also could be some broken long passes too. But I, I think it'll mostly be on Trey's back, in my opinion. All right, the next one here, Jared, is Trey rushing yards at 146 and a half yards. Over. Which is what he had against Minnesota last weekend. You know what? I originally wrote under. But you know what? Screw it. I'm going over. I'm going to go over here. Fun fact, Jared. Fun fact. Uh, Trey has what is that here has 80 yeah like 84 less yards than Blake Corum for the year on 60 less attempts good stat good (laughs) stat I like that stat Kyle is that good well, dep- from uh, whose that perspective? That's very good. That that puts tra- that puts Trey at almost seven yards a carry. Not not to not to not to um, take away from his thirteen yards per reception as well. Give that's Trey the ball. Give Trey the ball. Really, like if it was Trey total yards at one hundred and seventy, I'd still take the over. I, that's a lot. 170 is a lot. Which is which is what he had uh, against Minnesota last week. So, <laughs> and he had against Rutgers as well. When he's healthy, when he's healthy, he gets he gets over 170 yards. I that but the, sign stealing aside, this is still an incredibly talented front seven, Michigan. All right, next one: Ohio State forced turnovers at one and a half. I'm going to go under. Ohio State doesn't really turn the ball over that much. It, it, recently, yes. Recently, yes. But for the, for this season, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take the under. I would love yes. I would love to see McCarthy throw three picks in this game. No, but he means the the defense forcing turnovers. That mm-hmm. he, he yeah. said he said it right, Austin. Ohio State has not forced a ton of turnovers this year. Um, that just is what it is. Uh, quite frankly, they haven't been on the field a lot, which can lead to them not getting a lot of turnovers. Um, it's kind of a, you know, suffering by your own success a bit. Um, if, if this game is the, you know, if I, I gave like two separate score predictions, right? I said like 31, 17, and then I said like 21 to 10. If this is the 21 to 10 version of the game, then forced turnovers, or at least the turnover margin, could be the difference maker. It really, really could be the difference maker in this game. Like that one turnover, which, by the way, is what did Maryland in. Maryland had a real opportunity. And then there was that one turnover which then turned into a second turnover. And then there was the safety on the, on the, on the blocked punt. Mar- Maryland did themselves in guys. Um, avoiding those mistakes and hell, maybe forcing a couple is probably the difference maker in this game. Yep. Wait till JJ so you faces under, you an under actual well. defense. I mean, they faced one against Penn state. Um, the problem with what happened 
with Penn State was that their defense got totally just gassed at the end um, because their offense couldn't keep them off the field. Yeah. All right. Uh, JJ McCarthy passing attempts at 16 and a half. If it's over Ohio State wins, if it's under Ohio State loses, I'll tell you that much. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's why I picked over. <laughs> McCarthy completed a whole eight passes versus Penn State. Uh, is that how many he completed or how many he attempted? He was seven for eight against seven Penn State. He is, okay. he is 12. He's completed 12 passes. Uh, in the last six quarters that he's played. That's such a cheap stat because he didn't completed. even attempt to pass in the second half of Penn State. <laughs> That's such <Yes>. a cheap <laughs> stat. <laughs> but a fun stat, though. True. All right. You got over or under in this one, Jared? Um, I'm going to go over. All right. All right. Next one here, we have Tommy Pickles. Eichenberg tackles at eight and a half over. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. Uh, they're going to need to blitz and it's going, I think going to be pretty frequently Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, they're going to need to run blitz in order to, like I said, stop Michigan from turning this into three yards in a cloud of dust. I think they blitz from the edge. Austin says, uh, I think it depends upon game situation. I, I think that there needs to be and stunt inside. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I still think that there'll be a fair amount of like a gap blitzes from, from Tommy. I, I would say they're still going to, I mean, both are mm -hmm. right. We're both yeah. right. There's good. They're going to do both of those things. So you got over. Yeah, I got over. All right. Stover catches. Um, oh, nope, I missed one. Sorry. Marv Yards. Marv Yards at 144 and a half yards. Seems like a lot. <laughs> Seems like a lot. My biggest issue with Marv getting 145 yards through the air is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Ohio State's going to be able to throw the ball deep in this game. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't think that the Ohio State offensive line is going to give Kyle McCord the time to throw deep in this. So if he's going to get one hundred and forty five yards, it's either going to have to be via broken tackles. Um, or just through an incredible volume of passes. Um, I'm going to go. Under, I think, I think he, I think he gets about, I think he gets about 80 yards. Um, I, I think this is a trade game. I think this is a trade game. If he get, if he gets the, uh, Austin says, um, he, he said, forget, um, you forget. I already told you he's getting 11 catches, 168 yards and three tutties. If he gets that kind of numbers, we win. Oh, I said we win. We, hold on, hold on. We, we win, but you can almost etch his name into that Heisman then if he has that kind of numbers. I don't know about that. It's so hard for a receiver, but he 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 guarantees gets a plane. This is, I, he guarantees this is the year, has a plane. This is the year. This is the year for a wide receiver to to get it, though. He gets a trip to New York with those numbers, but I never guarantee a Heisman win unless it's a quarterback, in which case I'll consider guaranteeing a Heisman win mm -hmm. unless Bo Nix wins I, out in case um, I can't, his name can't get it from LSU. People are like, oh, I know LSU sucks, but he's really good. Like we've decided Daniels. Thank you. Um, people have started the, you know, well, why can't a quarterback on a bad team get the Heisman campaign? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, uh, Stover, four and a half catches. I'm going over with this one. 
I, th- I think Stover is going to get involved a lot in this game. So I'm going over. I agree. I, I think this is. Yeah, I again, there th- I think this is like a Marvin Harrison decoy game, much like what we saw last week. Um, I think it's Marvin Harrison going deep a lot. I think it's Julian Fleming going deep a lot to give Ohio State some space underneath in which you then see a Mecca and Stover get a good volume of catches. Yeah. Austin says Yodi, and then he says a Mecca eats. Yeah, I, I think if we're looking at, I don't know about yards. Yards are hard to predict, but if we're looking at the volume, I think the volume's going to a Mecca and Stover in this game. All right. Uh, next one here is yards per carry for Michigan at four point seven nine yards has to be under for high state wants to gotta win it has be to be under gotta be under it's gotta be stover is going to moss right. a linebacker isn't he i hope so <laughs> jt sacks and tackle for losses combined over under two and a half that's a big number um it's hard to predict any one defensive player getting that so i'm just gonna say under out of principle but it's certainly yep, possible. I agree. Yeah, that's... Michigan O-line isn't as good this year. They're not as good, but they're still very good. But uh, a large part of specifically this stat will be the health of their offensive tackles, which is uh, not known at this point. <laughs> they aren't right, as uh... well informed. I mean, True. Roman Wilson targets their their main their main receiver seven and a half targets in this game. Uh, this is a Loveland game. E- even if Roman Wilson mm-hmm. plays, which I think he will, I assume he will. Which I don't, but I don't think that's a guarantee. Um. Also, like in a game in which we're asking, will JJ McCarthy even throw the ball sixteen? 17 times to say any one player will get over eight targets feels like a lot, especially, like I said, when this feels more like a tight end, especially Loveland game than it does a wide receiver game. Um, With JJ McCarthy struggling to throw the ball, I wouldn't be surprised to see them totally abandon their wide receivers, especially when Ohio State's corners are playing so damn well. They, they're just going to focus underneath to the tight ends for most of the game. Uh, uh, Ty Leak. Ty Leak tackles four and a half. It's it's always tough for a defensive tackle to get that many tackles, but he has In been. This game? He has been recently. But also, this is a... This is... Michigan runs the ball 60% of their plays. And if I had the stat for just the past two weeks, I'm sure it's much higher than that. I'm positive. It's much higher than that. So uh, Ty Leak will get his opportunity to, to get over five tackles. I'm going to go under, I think he'll get three or four. Uh, Good, good line there, but yeah, if he gets like five, six there, that's that tells that tells me that Tylik is doing his job and stuffing that run there. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it, I was just Michigan's, saying, this does feel like the type of game in which the defensive tackles are kind of occupying blockers, leaving yeah. a lot of tackles to be had for. Uh, I'm gonna say Simon and I. I this is Eichenberg is gonna get a. He's he's shopping for tackles. Uh, at, at Costco this week. He's buying his tackles in bulk. Like he's going to get a ton of tackles in this game. Uh, and Cody Simon yep. will probably be right behind him and probably also Sonny Styles. I feel like are going to rack up tackles this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Michigan sacks on McCord at two and a half. You know, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I think go under that. I I think it's a perfect line. 
I think it's a perfect line. Like, I, I think it's, I, it's, it's, it's two or three feels like the correct answer. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to say under, and I'm going to say that primarily because I think Ryan Day is going to do his best to make sure that doesn't happen as far as quick passes and just trying to get rid of, and quite frankly, running the ball. Again, I think this is a trade game. Yeah. A uh, quorum touchdown to one and a half. So my, my, pre my prediction was 20 to 24. So that means Michigan would have two touchdowns and two um, field goals. So I'm going to go under. I think Coram will get one. Like they'll, they'll have a drive and they'll punch it in in the red zone there. But yeah, I'll go under for this one. Um, I'll, uh, I'll go under, uh, he, he'll get one. He could very easily get two, but just the likelihood of that second one going to a quarterback sneak or to Edwards is just too high. And I'd be, yep. I'd be surprised if they get three touchdowns this game personally. This is such an under game. This is this is this is an under game. Mm. Uh, Ohio State third down percentage at fifty nine point five nine. Speaking of the unders game here, I'm going to go under as well too, just because of the type of defenses are in this game. Ohio State gets if Ohio State gets over fifty percent third down conversions, I'm, I'd be I'd be very happy. And I, and I expect Ohio State to be able to move the ball really well. Ohio State on the season is only converting 46.21%. And th this defense is even, again, Connor Stallions, yada, yada, all that aside, this is still a very good defense. Uh, yep. So I'm going under on that. All right, and the last one here. Over under 0.5, as is tradition, Jared. 0.5 is the over under. Yeah. For the amount of dams we give for that whole state of Michigan. Under. I go under. I agree. All right. Is I that agree. all of them? That is all. There was one other question up here. Um, if Ryan Day beats Michigan and gets blown out in the playoffs, would this still be seen as a successful season for Ohio State? Um, I mean, I guess it depends upon what blown out means. You know what I mean? Like, do they hang with... 42 to 17. But even then, like, how does that 42, to, is it like 21 to 17 or 20 or 28 to 17 at halftime? And then it gets just some points thrown up at the end. Or are we talking like 35 to nothing at halftime? You know what I mean? Competitive eight minutes into the third quarter. Um, yeah. Then I would say Yes. I mean, I also assume that the big, you know, you win the Big Ten championship, you you beat Michigan, you have a perfect regular season. And then, like, you know, the offensive line finally fails. And, the, you know, which is just what we've been saying all year, that the offensive line will eventually let us down. I know. I'm just saying, like, I'm not. Any year you beat Michigan and win the Big Ten is a good year. Is it? A, does that make it a great year? No, but I'm not going to call that season a failure. Yeah, I, I would say to answer this question, I say, is this still seen as a successful season? Successful, yes, but I, I think, I think this this type of team can can win the national title this year. They they really can with the flaws that they have, because every every team has their flaws, and we've seen it. But I would consider this a success if 
Ohio State beats Michigan and gets blown out of the playoffs. I, I would still call it a success. Let's let's include beating Iowa, winning the Big Ten. Yes. Um, yeah. All right. That's Florida, all, Florida Buck says Saturday. if it's blown out by SEC, I'd say no. If we get blown out by Washington somehow, I can live with it slightly more. Honestly, true. <laughs> I, I, I and even more so if it's like Oregon, because like I just respect the living hell out of Oregon. Um, I think that matters too, just from a perception standpoint. I, I think you're right, Florida Buck. I, I think you're absolutely right. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show, is it not? Is that the end of the show? Yeah, that is it. That is all I have. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, I'm not even I'm not even going to try. That's uh, fair. Go, cl- go, cr- go, crew. There you go. Go, crew. Um, Kyle, I don't know how far back this tradition goes. I think it goes back a few years. But uh, we always play the dead Schembechlers at this point in time. They're a um, a parody punk band out of the Columbus area. Uh, they, they've made some funny anti-Michigan songs through the years in the tradition of like 70s punk rock. So that's that's what we're doing, as we always do at this point. So uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Dead Schembecklers. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Dead Schembecklers. <laughs>